fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me. Fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. Everybody, what's up? Howdy, how's it going? What's going on? And hopefully you missed me so much. That is why you tuned in this week to hear my angelic voice, said no one ever. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. This is the one, the only, the best fashion podcast out on the sound waves. This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast coming at you with brand new fashion content every single week because I am bossy in the most loving way and I get pure joy out of helping people dress better and look better and all of their friends and giving them the tools to say, damn it, I do look good on the daily. I mean, that's what I do. And that's the power that I can transfer to you. So you can do that too. And you can say that too. And I mean it. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to actually believe it. Like my client last week, she started a new job. Great. She got all new clothes. Great. She was like, damn, people think I look this good like every day. Now I got to keep this up. And I was like, "Mm, hey, Devory Queen. And she was like, damn, I should have started my first day in my pajama jeans. Um, how about no? How about no? Anywho, this is episode 104. And if you missed our 100th episode with the one and only Melissa Rivers, please go back and listen on wherever you stream your podcast or go to my YouTube channel, which is Fashion Crimes Podcast on YouTube. And you can watch the video there. She is now not only a friend of the podcast, we're totally best friends. I'm just saying. I don't know how your day can get any better. Today, my chickadees, we're going to talk about wardrobe maintenance and how to best care for your clothes. Oh, it's going to be a good one. So pay close attention, take some notes, tune everybody out, turn your phone off. This is going to be a good one. Look, here's the goal. Everything in your closet, you like it, it fits, you know where it is. I'm going to say that again. Everything in your closet, you like it, it fits, and you know where it is. I should get that printed on a t-shirt. I know it's a tall order, but it can absolutely be done. There are a few different buckets when taking care of your clothes. Number one, organization. Number two, care and cleaning. And number three, maintenance and repair. So let's start with number one, organization. Newsflash, fashion newsflash, how you store your clothes is part of taking care of your wardrobe. How you store your clothes is part of taking care of your wardrobe. Clothes are energy. How they present themselves to you is very, very important. So if you have a shit show going on when you open up your door and you don't know where anything is, this isn't taking proper care of your clothes. It's just not. So no one wants to shuffle through stuff until you find something that's clean or try on a bunch of shit because you have 12 different sizes to go through. It's not a great start to your day. It's actually ridiculous. Cleaning out your stuff can be overwhelming. I know, take it from me. People don't want to do it. I force people to do it. But that's when you have to call on the big guns with someone like me or someone in your area who specializes in closet cleanouts or a professional organizer. But know this, a professional organizer knows organization, not style. Very rare when they know both. Just... For an example, if you hire somebody to organize your kitchen, yes, they can do your closet too, but they're not going to be able to arm you with what to keep, what to throw away the way that I could. So just a differentiation there. Just a sidebar, if you need someone to help you with both style and organization, that would be a personal stylist or me. And I can do it for you. I can do it virtually or call me and I'll help you find someone in your area. There's a lot of amazing personal stylists out there that do closet cleanouts. If you want to try to clean out your closet on your own, we're going to start with the hangers. If you have those shitty ass plastic tube hangers or the plastic hangers or the wire hangers, 
Or if you're lazy and you leave your stuff in the dry cleaning poly bags until you wear it, all of your hangers must be changed to the Velvet Slimline hangers. Now, it doesn't matter which company. They were started by Joy Mangano. If you haven't seen the movie Joy, it's the story of Joy Mangano, and it's incredible. But lots of people have knocked those hangers off. She should pay me how many of those hangers I've sold. She must know me. I must find her. We will be friends, but I digress. I know exactly what you're thinking or why you're cussing me out right now. What's wrong with putting the dry cleaning up in the poly bag on the wire hanger? Number one, it looks terrible. Number two, you need to welcome the item back and put it on its appropriate hanger where it lives in your closet. You will also avoid like the hanger and shoulder bumps and it will get it back in its proper place. In addition, you'll know where to find it. I cannot tell you how many people do this, myself included, and I do want to say it is fine for a couple days until you get around to it. I'm not trying to take that away from you, but after two to three days, even four days, you really need to take it out of its plastic, remove the dry cleaning tag. I'm going to say that again. Remove the dry cleaning tag and then finally change the hanger from the wire hanger to a velvet slimline hanger. You are going to love the way it looks. And it really gets you into a great habit for closet organization. When I clean out closets, this is my biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve. Take the poly bags off and hang it on its proper hanger. I know it's annoying. I know it's a pain in the ass. Believe me, I'm well aware. However, you're going to thank me later. Now that you've changed all the hangers, next you have to organize your drawers. Now, look, this is going to be a completely separate episode on how to clean out your closet on your own. But if you at least go through your drawers, get rid of the old stuff or the things that you've worn to death, you're going to feel a lot better. If you know what's in your drawers and they aren't overstuffed, this is really going to help you tremendously. This is part of your organization and taking care of your clothes. So that in turn, will take care of you. Just because you can't see the clothes that are in your drawers, like they're out of sight, out of mind, it doesn't mean that it doesn't count. Same with your shoes. Let go of any shoes that are worn to death or old or dogged out. Only keep the shoes that you are actively, currently wearing. If you haven't worn them in three years, they got to go. Here's another thing that trips people up about shoes. I I know y'all keep your shoes like downstairs or in the garage. You take your shoes off before you come in. So they get piled in the garage or next to the door. If I come over and there's like 40 pairs of shoes in your garage, No, everyone's shit should be in their own space. I get it if you want to have a pair of shoes to walk the dog and maybe you keep them in the garage or downstairs closet, that's fine. If you don't want people to have shoes on in your home, that's great. Then you take them off and you bring them upstairs. That way it's not an eyesore when everyone comes over like or you have company. I can't tell you every single person's closet I've ever cleaned out They keep their shoes in the garage or they keep their things next to the front door because they think that they're keeping their carpets clean. That's fine, but it looks terrible. Everyone's shoes should be in their closet. And if you don't want them on in the house, they need to put them on at the door. Simple solution. The care and cleaning of your wardrobe is actually quite simple. You either wash or dry clean. Now, if you wash fold and return, you're in good shape. But overwashing and really not reading the care labels, that can lead to problems and issues. If you want the longest life out of your clothes, and you should, then you've got to read the care labels. Next, do you have a dry cleaner? If yes, are you going weekly? Are you going bi-weekly? Or are you stubborn and you don't go? I'm gonna let you sit on that one for a minute. I've certainly met people that over dry clean, like They don't want to wash, so they just send everything to the dry cleaners. That's a big no-no. Or they just don't go to the cleaners, which is not good either. So they're either one extreme or the other. So let's talk about what should be washed and what should be dry cleaned. Cotton, cotton poly blend, jeans, workout clothes, socks, pajamas, your kids' stuff. All of these things should be washed. Fine. Anything outside of these categories, slacks, dresses, blouses, button-down shirts, jackets, blazers, all of these things need to go to the dry cleaners. Even if you have a cotton dress and you probably can throw it in the wash if you want to, 
you should still take it to the cleaners because that way it can be dry cleaned and pressed. Pressing is so important and it really keeps the creases and the cuffs and the collars in their proper shape for longer. How often should you wash? Now, that is subjective to are you washing towels? Are you washing your kids' clothes? I mean, it really depends on your family dynamic. Obviously, when you wear your workout clothes, undergarments, or if you get a stain on something, that's when you should wash. If you actively, I'm just talking about you yourself, if you actively are not schwitzing in your clothes, you can get two to four wears out of something before you wash it. So like, for example, your bras should be washed like every two to three weeks if you're wearing them four hours a day or less. If you are wearing them like six to eight hours per day, you should probably wash them week to week, week and a half probably, and lay them flat to dry. Don't hang your bras by the shoulder straps, like on the doorknob. Do not lay them flat. Some people say that you should have like a lingerie bag, you know, and you can wash your underwear, like if you have really nice underwear and bras and things like that. I mean, I'm not opposed to that, but to me, it's not a must have. But if if you like that, great, keep it up. The more you wash anything, the more the fibers break down. So just be aware of that and that you're not overwashing. Your detergent choice, that's something that's subjective to you. Just for me specifically, there's no right or wrong. I like a non-abrasive, eco-friendly, no fragrance detergent. But if you like gain or whatever you like, that's fine. Do you need a special lingerie detergent for your bathing suits or your lingerie? I really don't think so, but it can't hurt. It's just not a must have for me. I actually saw on TikTok yesterday that this was a a laundry expert. And he said that fabric softener is an absolute waste of money that it does nothing. So there's that. I don't know if that's true or not, but I never have used fabric softener. I kind of washed the way that my parents washed our clothes growing up. We just threw everything in, put the detergent in, that was the end of it. And we threw everything in the dryer unless somebody bitched about having something in the dryer. So I kind of like do the same thing, but I don't, nothing that goes to the cleaners goes in the washing machine. I do use a dryer sheet. Now that really does make your clothes smell really good. And I was told it does harm your dryer over time, but I really don't know if that's true or not either. I throw everything in the dryer, but I will say that I do use dryer sheets two and three times. So that I will definitely do that, not to save money, but just because it's still good. It's not dead after one use. I throw everything in the dryer that can be dried except my jeans because I think it does shrink them a little bit. And God knows my ass is from the window to the wall. So I need as much ass room as I can. So I like to lay my jeans flat and dry them. If you want to throw them in the dryer, you totally can. Just do it on low heat. Do not send stuff to the cleaners that doesn't need to go, like jeans or sweatshirts or t-shirts. That's a waste of money. You don't want to send that kind of stuff to the cleaners. Definitely like sweaters, slacks, anything that I mentioned before, like silk or even like a silk blend or wool should go to the cleaners. And I'll say it again, when you get your stuff back from the cleaners, try to make a habit out of changing the hanger, taking the tags off and putting it on the proper hangers, which would be the velvet slimline hangers. (laughs) Maintenance and repair. Maintenance is really just that. Now, here's my alterations lecture. If you have a button missing, keep the button and fix it. If you have a rip or a tear, fix it. If you have a stain that cannot be removed, you need to part with that article of clothing. Most cleaners do have alterations, people. They do these things. They fix buttons, rips, and tears. There is no shame in going to the cleaners and saying, I don't know how to sew a button on. Here's my button. Put it back on. Now, if you have lost the button, if you go to the cleaners, they have a shit ton of extra buttons. Pick out a new button. It just doesn't matter. And I learned that because I lost a lot of buttons off a coat. We went through her whole stash and I found eight new buttons and most of them matched. I was like, go for it. So if you lose your button, don't worry about it. They have a ton of extra. I have screamed this from the mountaintops forever and ever. And here I go again. If you have a problem buying off the rack, meaning if you have to get things taken in because you have to go up a size or down a size, or if you're super short and vertically challenged, you need a good alterations person. It's super important for your clothes to actually fit. And a great alterations person is your partner in this. If you go into a department store and try on pants and you can't find anything that fits perfectly, 
chances are that you probably can't buy something straight off the rack and have it fit properly. Cry me a river, welcome to my world, okay? I have to go up in jeans just for them to fit over my hips and my thighs, and then the shit's too big in the waist, so I have to get the waist taken in. Look, most people cannot buy off the rack, but just know this, there is an art to having your clothes fit well. You can take something expensive and have it not fit correctly, it's going to look cheap. But you can also have something very inexpensive, take it to a tailor and have it fit perfectly and it will look expensive. This is actually a quote from my best friend and friend of the podcast, Melissa Rivers. That's what she said. And I do totally agree with her. If you have an alterations person already, mazel tov to you. That's great. That's amazing. Keep up the good work. If you don't, or if you know someone who needs one, lend a helping hand and offer the suggestion to someone who actually needs it. It will make you love your clothes more because they fit so well. I'm telling you, it's addicting. Then you're going to want all all your clothes to fit well. Next, don't sleep on the cobbler. Having a great shoe person to fix your heels is a game changer. Anything wrong with your shoes, they're torn, they're scratched, they're beat down. This is money well spent to put into your already expensive shoes. Keep them up. Any leather place will probably fix shoes. Find a really good one in your area. Last maintenance issue is the steamer. If you're an adult and you're wrinkled, You just have no excuse for it. I'm going to call you out. You need a steamer. Some people prefer to iron. I just think it's a little bit outdated because it takes too long and you have a big ass ironing board. I like to steam. I'd rather have you iron than not, but I like to steam. My favorite steamers are Jiffy, just like the peanut butter, and Rowenta. I got a steamer for my wedding shower, a Rowenta. I still have it. It's amazing. These are two great brands. And your clothes are pressed and wrinkle-free in seconds, not minutes, seconds. It's an investment and you're going to have it forever. I live for my steamer. Do me a solid. Go on my Pinterest board this week. There's some steamer examples on there if you're not familiar or if you're not sure what to get. So here's the debate. The big steamer that sits on the floor or travel steamer. It's really come a long way, and some people do really like a travel steamer. I find them to be cumbersome because they always leak, but I'm sure the technology has improved. I haven't seen one in a while, but I always prefer the big steamer that sits on the floor. If I'm in a hotel room, I will fill the iron with water and then steam my clothes with the iron, holding the iron you know, next to the clothes, not on the ironing board. To conclude where there is pride of ownership in your clothes, it really shows. When you take that extra step and you steam your clothes and you take time to read the care label, it really does make a difference on how you feel about yourself and your clothing. And that really is the point, is it not? You're supposed to feel fabulous in what you're wearing. Why would you wear something that you don't feel good and stupid? Chances are you wouldn't. Give your clothes the long life they deserve by taking care of them. And you know what? Damn it, they're going to take care of you loving this journey for you. Y'all, thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. I know this was a short one, but I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, just ask me, send me an email, DM me. I have two email addresses, Holly at Fashion Crimes Podcast, Holly at hollycatstyling.com. I'm here for you. Look, this has been an ongoing discussion with my clients because how much should they wash? How little should they wash? laundry's overflowing. I'm really just talking about your personal clothes. I'm not talking about your kid's stuff or your husband's stuff or anything like that or your partner's stuff. I'm talking about your clothes. You have to be responsible for your care and clothes yourself because if you're depending on somebody else to do your laundry and they don't do it correctly, then that's where you suffer. If you get the dry cleaning back, hanging in your closet, do what you got to do, come back, take the poly bags off. I know it's hard, but you can do it. And you're also setting this up, care and pride of ownership for your children, right? You also want to show them the best of your ability, how to care for your clothes, how to do the laundry, how to not let the shit sit in the laundry for seven days and then wash it and then let the shit sit in the dryer for four days. I mean, that is something that might or might not be true in my house. I can't confirm or deny this. Sometimes I do forget about it if it's in the dryer and I'm like, damn, where's my shit? And I'm like, oh my God, I left it in there for four days after I dried it, my own fault. So if you got a lot of laundry in your house, take care of your own clothes, 
your kids will follow suit. Hopefully keep your closet organized, get rid of the stuff that you don't need. And I'm going to do a whole separate episode on how to clean out your closet by yourself. You can do it. You have the power. Yes, you do. You're amazing. You are a superstar. You're a superwoman. You're a superman. You're a super person. You can do this. This is part of life. Be an adult and do it. If I have to suffer, you have to suffer. It's a circle of life. I'm just saying. Anyway, my name is Holly Cates. I am the hostess with the mostest, your favorite personal stylist, the best friend you never knew you needed in fashion. This has been the Fashion Crest Podcast. Y'all, leave me a review on iTunes. Can I just tell you, I totally have been sleeping on this. I forgot to tell y'all, please, please, please take two seconds, 30 seconds, write me a review on iTunes. Tell me how much you like the podcast. Give me some feedback. It's really going to help me push me up, up, up in the directory on iTunes. I really appreciate it. And if you do write me a review, let me know, and I'm going to do something special for you. That would be Amazeballs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation, your support. As always, follow me on Instagram, Fashion Friends Podcast. Follow me, hollycatstyling.com. Follow me on YouTube, and also follow me on TikTok. I really, really appreciate your support. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening, and we are out.